Hello, my name is Morgan Llewellyn. And my name is Noah Lutz. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the first broadcast of Cedar Springs, Springs TV, TV Live. Live. How are you doing today, Noah? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing good too. Um, are you excited to meet all the new students? This, all the... <laughs> I've met quite a few new students, but I've also met quite a few new staff this year. I don't have any as a teacher, but I have had quite a few opportunities as I have a bunch of classes right by the new extensions. But to help everyone else meet the new teachers, here is Josie with interviews of new staff. Hi, I'm Josie Kenyon reporting from CSTV. Today we will be interviewing some of the new staff here at Cedar Springs to get to know a little bit more about them. My profession is a math research teacher basically, so I am kind of on the special education side of math. At Cedar Springs High School, I am a resource teacher in the area of math, mostly Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. I'm a teacher, math and science. Um, this is actually my very first year, so I like just graduated college, so it's my very first year <laughs> teaching. I have been teaching for 17 years. Um, previously, my 16 years, I was at Potterville High School, right outside of Lansing. I've taught 35 years. Uh, I'm from like Michigan area, so the reason I chose Cedar Springs was kind of I wanted to stay in the area just with people I know and love, but also um, the school just, the community seems so good and everyone seems so close and supportive. I wanted to work for Cedar Springs uh, Public Schools because it's where I graduated from. Um, so being that this is my very first time ever teaching my very first year. Um, I don't have much to compare it to, but um, just the overall experience has been incredibly welcoming and warm. When I came for my interview, the people were very friendly and I felt like it was a good spot for me. Kind of like a small town feeling, but a big school. I have a twin sister that teaches also in the same building. We're identical, Mrs. Olson. Everyone's been just so kind and yeah, it's just everyone's, there's just really nice people here. Uh, my favorite part of working as a teacher is just the relationship with students, um, getting to know them. I love working with the students here at Cedar. The students are just what makes the job so great. Oh, my first impression of Mr. Simmons, I met him this summer. Um, he was very positive and upbeat. Um, he seemed to give off a vibe that I think it's going to be a good school year. I would say my first impression of Mr. Simmons was fired up. He is so fired up and I love that. He has a very positive attitude and I like to think that I do as well. So far my favorite part has been how welcomed I've been. So the staff has been so kind to me, checking on me, making sure I'm okay. But um, meeting the students too, a lot of students like saying hello in the hallway and that kind of thing even though I'm a stranger. So it's pretty good. This is home for me. Thanks to all of our new staff's participation. Make sure you greet them in the hallways if you see them. Now back to our anchors, Noah and Morgan. Thanks so much, Josie. I know we're all excited to see some new fresh faces in the building. Absolutely. It's amazing seeing a ton of new people in the building this year. On the topic of new people, let's send it over to Aiden as he interviews our new amazing principal, Mr. Simmons. Hey everyone, it's Aiden McMartin from Cedar Springs TV. Today we're going to be talking about the new principal at Cedar Springs High School, Mr. Todd Simmons. Mr. Simmons came all the way from Paloma Westphalia Community Schools. Here's what he thinks about his first few months at Cedar Springs High School. So I started teaching and coaching. I taught industrial ed, so I did a, kind of like what Mr. Ringler does, but he's a lot better at it than I was. I did that for three years and I coached football and basketball at PW, ran our strength and athleticism program. Then from there I went back to Central Michigan University to coach with my head coach. I was an assistant coach in men's basketball there for a few years. Then my head coach, Jay Smith, he resigned so I went to Tri-County for two years and I taught and coached there. Um, and then in 08, uh, they asked me to come back to PW and th then I was there for those 14 years in leadership. Like I said, a little bit at orientation, you know, I never, I never wanted to be a principal. I don't want to be a principal. I never want to be a principal. It's really, uh, um, 
My whole why has always been just to help people, you know, serve, mentor, kind of coach. That's what I wanted to be when I was younger. Uh, I just wanted to be a teacher and a coach, and that's what I feel like I am. My experiences have shown that when you have a champion process and every day you're just trying to get to your personal best, the results are gravy. The champion results come with the champion process. So that's our intent and that's how we're gonna get there. Kind of our why and our how. Like I talked to our staff and students about it, it won't be something that's quantified or qualified by a publication or an organization. We want to be the number one school in the state for all of our kids. So regardless of their interests, regardless of their passions, regardless of their needs, we just want to be the number one school. And I know with that, it'd be tough to ever say, hey, we made it. But I think if we're all pulling and pushing and prodding and <laughs> driving towards that intent to be number one, I think that's best for kids. Man, uh, dream big. You know, uh, like the, my art club made that mosaic for me, you know, uh, just dream big. Don't let anybody tell you, you can't reach your dreams. You know, I lived my childhood dream and unfortunately, uh, not many people can say that and that's unfortunate. And I feel like oftentimes why folks can't say that they lived their dream is because they allowed someone to take their dream. All I could say is this is where I'm supposed to be. There's no doubt in my mind this is where I'm supposed to be. Thanks, Mr. Simmons, for telling us more about you. We hope to have you a part of our team for many years to come. Now signing off to Morgan and Noah. Thank you, Aiden, for that amazing insight on our brand new principal, Mr. Simmons. I know that Mr. Simmons is definitely enthused to be in a brand new building, and so is the student body. Yeah, and it definitely seems like a brand new building too, with all of the construction that's been happening over the summer. To recap on all of the new layout changes, here is JR reporting on the scene. Hi, I'm JR from CSTV and I'm here to talk about the construction that's been going on in our building. Since about a year ago, there has been a lot of work in our building, but now, since school has started, we could finally get a closer look at it. Now, instead of the old carpet, we have these glossy hardwood floors that are in the E and F wings of the building, along with the fine arts hallway and the two hallways leading to the fine arts hallway, which I am looking forward to slipping on in the winter. <laughs> Another great addition is the expanded cafeteria, which now encompasses the old teacher's lounge and is still being further expanded. The larger cafeterias allow us to have two lunches instead of three, which is convenient for everyone. Of course, there is also the new part of the E-Wing, which houses some of our new staff. These rooms are mostly for language classes, but the EMC and online classes are also hosted in the room. The Media Center and Library has been converted into the Academic Services area and the main office. and the old main office is still under construction and it's become new classrooms. Construction is still going on as we speak, but I think we can all agree that these changes are good and the school will be better for it. It's definitely interesting to hear about all of the changes that our school has received over the summer. I agree. Have you had a chance to look at the new wing? I actually have. I have a class right nearby and I have to say the construction workers put in a lot of work making it look perfect. And let's not forget about all the work that they put into renovating the high school's track. <laughs> oh, of course. Here at Cedar Springs, we want to make sure athletes have the best spaces and areas to use, especially for upcoming fall sports. Speaking of fall sports, let's send it over to Kevin as he previews all of the fall sports and an athlete from each. This is Kevin Mayerhack from CSTV. We have interviewed a few student athletes here in Street Springs High School that play fall sports and what their thoughts are on the season. Here's what they have to say. Um, I'm most excited for the big games that we have. You know, we have our schedule this year. 
Um, but excited for the big stages, all the home games that we have, and just having fun with all the guys. Uh, what I'm most excited for this season is our bond that we have together and the teams we play. We get to play uh, Catholic Central and South Christian the same week, and that's a really tough week, but uh, I think it will be really fun. Our goals are to communicate well and put our like motto this year is we over me, which means the whole team over ourselves. The tennis team's goals is uh, just mostly to have fun this year. We don't have a lot of players, so we're doing the best with what we can, so we're just trying to enjoy it. It's a few people's uh, last season. Some of our team goals this year are to score 60 plus goals this year, which is, was, is easy. And then uh, not allow more than 30 goals. And we're doing pretty good. We only have one allowed in like seven games, six games. And uh, win districts is a big one for us this year. We got a lot, a lot of talent on our roster and we just want to make things happen. Probably our toughest competitor is South Christian right now in Catholic Central. Um, our conference overall, Almost everyone's competitive instead of, or other than two teams. So um, it'll be a hard fought battle every single, every single conference meet, no matter what. Um, we have a lot of competitors that are tough this year. I think the hardest one is obviously Riff Rouge, but then after that, I mean, Dillon West is good, Cat Central is good, South Coast is good. So I mean, I can't really say the hardest one, but top four are definitely those teams. Um, there's not a ton of changes. We only lost two seniors. But uh, this year we all got to connect at a Western Michigan soccer camp. And so we all bonded really well and we're all really close, tight and knit. And so we have really good confidence in each other. And so it'll be a fun season. Um, we have obviously bonded and we've lost a lot of girls. So we've had to gain some, but honestly, we're just growing as a team. Um, what's different about this year's team is we have seven seniors on the team this year compared to three or four that we had last year. Um, honestly, the, the team overall, the change is I feel like we're put on a more strict um, work plan. I feel like last year we had a bit more leniency, but this year um, we're all working towards the same goal, so we're all willing to um, work harder than we have last year to try and succeed more than we did last year. This is Kevin Vanderhag signing off, sending it back to Morgan and Noah. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the preview on all of the upcoming fall sports. I know that I'm definitely excited to watch all of our student athletes out there being a part of amazing teams and working together throughout the season. But while sports are definitely the most popular events here at Cedar Springs, I do think we should pay some attention to our after school organizations and clubs. For that, here is Eli presenting on the topic. Hello, this is Eli Mullen from Cedar Springs TV. As the school year begins here at Cedar Springs High School, the staff here is heavily encouraging all students to join clubs of their interest. We asked Mr. Moffat, our athletic director and runner of the clubs, some details about them and what you have to do to join them if you're interested. Um, I do know that we're going to have art club. Um, I am assuming we'll have debate club. Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I do have a student that just requested to start a chess club here at the high school as well. Um, obviously you still have NHS, um, we'll still have theater. Um, those are I think, the big ones. Oh, FFA um, club is also a, a large um, club here at Cedar Springs High School. Um, so those are the ones that are coming back from next year. I think the most popular club um, is a mix of FFA and uh, art club. Uh, Miss Swift has a ton of kids down there um, after school for her art club, um, but obviously Mr. Willett does a great job with the FFA here program here, and a lot of those kids love being a part of that club as well. Um, some new clubs this year are, uh, is a big one that we just started, or are going to start, is Chess Club. Um, we also have FCA, uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which is going to be run by uh, one of our assistant basketball coaches this year, along with Mr. Relich. Um, so I think that would be an interesting club to have in the morning as well. If you want to sign up for a club, obviously just go to that teacher um, if, there, if there is a, a teacher that already has a club. Um, but if a kid has a, a club in mind that they would like to start here, the big, first thing they have to do is meet with me, um, talk about the club. Obviously then they have to find some type of staff um, volunteer that will help them with the run the club. Um, some of our clubs are student-led. Um, but others are, are, are teacher-led, so I think it really depends on what type of club is and how much experience some of our teachers have um, in some of the clubs that they're going to have. The, the most important thing with clubs in Cedar Springs High School is just get kids involved in something outside of the school day. Um, I think the more relationships you can develop with those teachers in those clubs, but also the, the relationships you can develop with all the other kids that are part of that club, 
um, just gets, gets kids to bond with each other a little bit more than just going through the regular school day and, and hang out with the same group of friends. I mean, some of the people that are in your friend group may be in those same clubs, uh, but obviously the more clubs you belong to, which obviously is, is awesome as well, you know, you could belong to three, four, five different clubs if you really wanted to, um, you just get to reach a totally different friend group, which obviously will benefit you in the long run along with just creating those relationships that will help you out through school. After hearing those various details about clubs, I encourage all students to check out a club and even potentially join one if it matches their interests. This is Eli Malone for Student Strings TV, signing off. Those clubs and activities look amazing. Make sure to reach out to any students or staff for more information if you are interested. Our Senior Student Council is also especially helpful in this situation. Most definitely. They opened up lots of opportunities for the student body this year, and most importantly for the seniors. And with many events coming up, here is Lee keeping us updated on many of the senior events. Thank you, Morgan and Noah. I'm Leah Ramsey from Cedar Springs TV, and we are going to be reporting on the se seniors' upcoming events. On September 21st, Jostens will be in for the seniors to order their cap and gowns. Homecoming is going to be on Saturday, October 8th, and the theme is going to be all European. The freshmen's theme is London, the sophomores is Rome, juniors is Venice, and the seniors is Paris. We hope to see some very, very cool hallways. Over the summer, the, our student council made it able for our seniors to paint their parking spots for the very first time at Cedar Springs High School. Here are some of the pictures. Potapuff signups are starting this week for $25 after school and at lunches. The game is on September 28th at 6 p.m. Practices start either September 4th or 11th and more information to come. This year's prom will be held at the Pinnacle Center in Rockford. No set date yet or theme, but it will be there. Graduation is going to be on June 1st. The senior all night party is already being planned. At orientation, packets are passed out with all the information you can need. The total payment is due before March 30th, 2023. Before January 13th, it is $100, and after January 16th and beyond, it's $125. All payments are non-refundable and can be turned into Aaron Meredith at this address. They can also be dropped off in the drop box for the party located in the office. You can also Venmo your payment here and in the comment add your full name. For more updates, follow the CSHS Student Council's Instagram. Back to you, Morgan and Noah. Thank you so much, Leah, for reporting on all of the upcoming events for seniors. I have to imagine it must be both liberating and stressful for all of the seniors to have all of this stacking up. Yeah, and to know that this is their last year here must feel really weird for them. And for us, our last year will be next year. But it is nice to look around and see all of our classmates grow into young adults with dreams and aspirations. But for now, for Cedar Springs TV News, I'm Noah Lutz. And I'm Morgan Llewellyn. Thanks it's, for watching and always remember, it's, <laughs> it's a, a great, great day, day to be a Red, Red Hawk. Hawk.